Often on the Young Turks, we've told you about the drone program and the kill list that President Obama has and how outrageous it is. Well, we now have a memo that confirms exactly how bad we thought it was. And of course, uh, previous reports came from leaks within the White House. That's why we believe that they were true in terms of reporting it, because it was the White House bragging about it. Well, now Michael Zikoff of NBC News has the white paper. It's a 16-page memo that justifies killing U.S. citizens with drone strikes. So. Uh, is it as they assured us, something that they do only in the most dire circumstances if somebody's about to launch against the United States? We've got an imminent attack coming. My God, we had to take out this incredibly important Al-Qaeda leader. As you read the memo, it becomes obvious that of course that's not what happened. So let me begin quoting it to you. The threat posed by Al-Qaeda, they explain, and its associated forces demands a broader concept of uh, Imminence in judging when a person continually planning terror attacks presents an imminent threat. I love lawyerly language. Do you understand what that means? That means an imminent threat doesn't mean an imminent threat. It doesn't have to be immediate. It's a threat whenever, as long as somebody in the executive branch has decided, yeah, we don't like that guy, he might do something wrong at some point, take his ass out. Now, here are the so-called limitations. It does not require the U.S. to have information about a specific imminent attack against the U.S. Well, that doesn't seem like a limitation, that seems like the exact opposite. So go ahead, bombs away. Number two, it requires that the capture of a terrorist suspect not be feasible, but as the memo explains later, or be an undue burden on our troops. Well, you know, it would have been a burden trying to capture that guy, or perhaps that host country didn't agree, so we executed somebody within the host country because it was an undue burden. Okay. And number three, the operation complies with the fundamental law of war principles. Now that's hilarious, because the whole memo violates the law of war principles, but it says at the end, don't worry, we're following the law of war principles. Why? Because we said so. <laughs> now, do the laws of war allow you to execute someone who is not an imminent threat and not on the battlefield and not adjudicated in any way? Well, they don't, but we just said they did, so trust us, we're the government. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. So uh, that then leads to, well, who's making this decision? Well, don't worry, we've got more information on that. Isikoff explains several different quotes put together here from the white paper. An informed high-level official, well, if they're informed, then of course, have at it, us, right? An informed high-level official of the U.S. government may determine that the targeted American has been recently involved in activities posing a threat of violent attack, and there is no evidence suggesting that he has renounced or abandoned such activities. So, we have a high-level official within the imperial government who has decided that you have some activities at some point, whether they're recent is not defined, that is a cause of concern for us, and as far as we know, you have not renounced those things that we found somewhat suspicious. This doesn't involve you getting arrested and we finding out, hey, you know what, what were those activities and what were you planning? And stuff? No, this involves your execution. Now, you remember during the Bush years, they used to have a euphemism for torture, it was enhanced interrogation, and we fought a long battle to make sure it was called what it was, torture. Now, these are not executions, they're targeted killings. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, 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 here's what they are. Assassinations and executions. These are of U.S. citizens. Remember, three U.S. citizens have already been assassinated, including a 16-year-old. That was the very, very dangerous Anwar al Awlaki's son. And when Robert Gibbs was asked about it, former White House spokesperson, he said, well, then they should know who they're associating with. But he wasn't associating with him. That was his dad. It wasn't even in the same strike. It was in a different strike. But trust the government. Don't worry. When we execute 16-year-old U.S. citizens, I'm sure we had a good reason. That 16-year-old was an imminent threat? Well, they refuse to share any information about that strike. Well, we continue here with this uh, Orwellian uh, words. A decision maker determining whether an Al-Qaeda operational leader presents an imminent threat of violent attack against the United States must take into account 
that certain members of Al-Qaeda are continually plotting attacks against the United States. Do you understand that one? We don't have to have information that the attack is imminent or immediate or any such thing. You have to understand, they're goddamn Al-Qaeda. They're constantly planning. So we can kill them at any time because we assume they, were, they are in mid-planning. How much broader can this possibly be? If you allow the president to do this, what won't you allow him to do? These are US citizens that are executing. Quote, Al-Qaeda would engage in such attacks regularly to the extent that they were able to do so. This is from the memo. In other words, well, we might not have particular evidence in this case, but trust us, if they could, they would be attacking us. That's why we killed them before they had a chance to act. Well, that's great. So we're executing US citizens abroad based on pre-crimes. But trust the government. We've got a good man in charge. Obama's such a good man. He wouldn't make a mistake, would he? He wouldn't be malicious about this. That's why we trust the king. That's why he is our king ordained by God. Oh right, he's supposed to be a president and we're supposed to be a democracy. We settled this stuff back in the Magna Carta. They're setting us back 800 years. Bush did it, Obama's doing it worse. Bush never executed US citizens like this. Dick Cheney thought, well, that's a bridge too far. And now Obama's doing it. Yes, Bush started us down this road. Yes, he said the entire planet is a battlefield, which is outrageous, which means that you can shoot people on sight, basically, because, oh, I'm in imminent danger. Everything's a battlefield. Obama took it and went a step further. The memo continues. The US government may not be aware of Al-Qaeda plots as they are developing and thus cannot be confident that none is about to occur. Oh, for Christ's sake, when you thought it couldn't get any worse. We're not confident that a plot is not happening, so we decided to execute a US citizen on the off chance that it might be happening. <laughs> Unbelievable. And yet it continues. A lawful killing in self-defense, the memo explains, is not an assassination. Oh, well, when you put it that way, I didn't know you were acting in self-defense just in case the guy was going to do something against us that we're not really sure about, well, you executed him before he had a chance to do it. Well, then that would make it a lawful killing, right? Because the courts have decided it. Nope, no judicial review. None of the three Americans executed so far had a trial or even any due process in terms of the judiciary. We never went to the judiciary. It was just a bunch of people sitting in the executive department deciding, hey, you know what? We all talked, that seems like due process. The guys I hired to work for me as lawyers have agreed that I can kill that guy. Well, are you not merciful? You checked with the guy you hired whose paycheck depends on him agreeing with you. And of course, our beloved Attorney General Eric Holder summarized all this earlier in a speech that he made last year. Due process and judicial process are not one and the same, particularly when it comes to national security. The Constitution guarantees due process. It does not guarantee judicial process. Stephen Colbert joked around about it, saying, well, it could be a process of rock, paper, scissors. It could be a trial by fire. We didn't say you were going to go to a court. It's just a due process. The due process is Holder and Obama got together and they said, should we kill that guy? Yeah, high five. Uh, that's your due process.